हरि ओम तत्सत वेलकम टू ज्योतिर्मायानंद सोसाइटी आर जर्नी टू सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब आर चैनल फॉर द मिस्टिकल मीनिंग्स ऑफ द स्क्रिप्चर्स एंड टू एंजॉय डेली सत्संग वी आर करेंटली स्टडिंग द बुक द मिस्ट्री ऑफ द सोल कथा उपनिषद ऑथर्ड बाय स्वामी ज्योतिर्मायानंद जी महाराज नरेटेड बाय माई सेल्फ स्वामी निखिलानंद सो वी आर ऑन चैप्टर नंबर वन सेक्शन टू मंत्रा नंबर इलेवन Yama continues, O Nachiketa, you have observed and renounced all the heavenly worlds, wherein one can satisfy all desires, which are the basis of the material world, where there is no fear, which are praiseworthy and exist for a long period of time. You are surely wise. The self is beyond illusion. Having known the self to be eternal and imperishable, Nachiketa renounced even the glorious worlds of heaven. Mantra twelve: That Atman, the absolute self, is eternal, all-pervading, hidden in the cave of the heart, abiding in the forest of the world process. Having known that self, who is difficult to perceive through intuitional experience. the hero among the aspirants goes beyond pleasure and pain a hero among the aspirants is one who is able to direct his mind towards the eternal within him lord yama continues his instructions for his disciple nachiketa regarding the nature of the self that self transcends time space and causation it is one and universal it is eternal and infinite this is the knowledge of the self and the wisdom coming from god of death himself yama it cannot be perceived by the senses and the mind because it is the basis of them but it can be perceived by intuitive realization when mind is purified by hearing the scriptures from the lips of a guru reflecting over the meaning of the upanishads and meditating upon the nature of the self constantly one rises above the limited functions of the mind and attains the intuitive vision which reveals the self so this is the way to get that self knowledge it has to come through direct experience otherwise the self remains veiled by maya the divine illusion which hides the reality and reveals it is something else in the form of objects that perish conditions that are illusory and experiences that are ephemeral moving on to chap mantra 13 he who has heard this blessed instruction pertaining to the self and has meditated upon it will realize the supremely subtle atman the self he attains brahman the embodiment of bliss and thus he enjoys o nachiketa verily the gates of to the supreme abode are flung open for you the self is of the nature of supreme bliss the pleasures that are experienced by people through these objects of the world are merely reflections of that infinite bliss brought about by the instrumentality of the mind and senses these pleasures are like drops while the experience of brahman is like the ocean all is dear for the sake of the self therefore the self is the embodiment of bliss the self is the same as brahman the absolute it is known through intuitive intellect therefore it is subtle but for one who is endowed with dispassion and discrimination the gates of heaven are open he can attain release nachiketa was such an aspirant his intellect had developed an immaculate form of purity he was not tempted even by the greatest and the best objects of the world having heard his own praise from the lips of lord yama nachiketa feeling as it were shy about them interrupts yama asking in mantra number 14 
Nachiketa says, Please tell me about that which is beyond dharma virtue and a dharma vice, which is beyond the created and the uncreated, which is beyond the three periods of time of past, present and future. Please tell me about that which you behold as the truth. Nachiketa asks, O Lord, if thou art so pleased, then please explain to me the nature of the self. Nachiketa asks, O Lord, then it is most difficult to understand this self because it is beyond dharma, all attributes of objects, all conceptions, conceptions of virtue and also beyond a dharma, all conceptions of vice. Virtue and vice are relative conceptions of the mind only. Brahman is beyond all these mental conceptions, all objects physical, astral and mental are evolutes of Prakriti. They are created while Prakriti is uncreated with reference to objects that are created. Brahman is beyond the unmanifest Prakriti, the subtle cause for all the balance of the three gunas. Brahman is beyond time as well. At this Lord Yama explains, Mantra number 15. Yama says, That supreme abode which is praised by the Vedas for attaining which one practices Brahmacharya and various austerities, that abode I will describe in brief. It is Om. Om. That is why Om, we always start with three Oms. And that is also the cosmic hum through which the universe came into being. Om is the symbol of the Absolute. It is a mystic formula. It contains three letters A, U and M. But then we combine the A and the U and make it O and then M. Om. So some people write it as Om, O and M, some A, U, M. A represents the physical plane. U represents the astral plane. And M represents the causal plane of the universe as well as of the individual. When Om is pronounced, A merges into U and it becomes Om. This symbol of the merging of the physical consciousness with the astral consciousness is the process of evolution. The O sound terminates with the nasal sound M. M, M. This is symbolic of the merger of astral consciousness and causal consciousness. Aum. So all that needs to be said is said in Om. You open your lips, you expand them and then you close them. So then follows silence which is called the fourth uh, matra, the fourth syllable as it were. This is the soundless sound, the mystic word which is the same as God and represents the absolute. Thus Om is a brief description of Brahman. The practice of Om implies constant meditation on Brahman. Austerities that purify the mind and discipline the senses and the disciplines of Brahmacharya such as celibacy, refraining from gross impulses etc. enable one to attain Brahman. Mantra 16 This letter Om is indeed Brahman, says Yama. This is indeed imperishable. One who knows this letter Om attains whatever he desires. Om is the symbol of Brahman, the Absolute. The mind is rendered still with the help of repetition of Om with feeling and understanding. In the stillness of the heart, one goes beyond the symbol of Om and attains the true state of Brahman. Brahman is the consummation of all desires. When Brahman is attained, all is attained. Mantra number 17. This is the best support. This is the highest support. Having understood the support, one attains glory in the region of Brahman. Om is the best symbol of Brahman. In the practice of inquiry and meditation, the mind needs a symbolic support. When deeper concentration is acquired, the symbol is transcended and one enters into the realm of Brahman. Understanding Om implies acquiring knowledge of that self 
which is beyond all limits of the mind and the senses. Mantra 18. This self is neither born nor it dies. It is not created by anything, nor is it the creator of anything. It is unborn, eternal, of homogeneous nature, the most ancient beyond decay and age. Even when the body is destroyed, the self remains imperishable. Physical, astral and causal bodies are, as it were, coverings of the self. Ignorant people feel that there is nothing beyond the physical body or the astral and the causal bodies. But this is not true. These constitute the realm of not-self, which changes and is subject to death. The self is beyond all changes and destruction. Death cannot affect the self even as the dispersal of clouds cannot affect the vast sky. Thus, a wise aspirant should develop the intuitive vision which reveals the immortality of the self. Death pertains to the fleeting personality. You are not this personality. Who are you? You are the immortal self or Atman. The habit of clinging to the ego must be destroyed in order to realize the glory of the expansive self. So with this, we conclude our satsang for today and we will continue this beautiful journey in tomorrow's satsang. This is Swami Nikhilanand. Hari Om Tat Sat.